The cryptocurrency Ethereum has faced a hey, turn off the TV. Turn off your TV by decade. Here it is on Spotify. <laughs> Guys, I'm done with the 2020s. Sorry, I didn't understand. Turn off. You know, people always say the 80s was the best decade. You don't remember them, but I do. So then I, so thought, then I thought, there's nothing stopping us from living in the 80s now. To me, the 80s wasn't about a date on the calendar. Can you get out of my pocket? It was about how we lived. There's nothing to say that we have to use AirPods with an iPhone. I mean, Walkmans are all over eBay, and they actually still make AA batteries. And there's no law forcing us against wearing double denim or putting up 80s posters and listening to Duran Duran. Well, there probably should be a law against wearing double denim, but you get my point. So yeah, I'm done with the 2020s. I'm going to buy a Walkman and a whole load of other stuff that I had when I was a kid and travel back to the 1980s by recreating not one, but two of my childhood bedroom setups right here, right now. And I hope you'll come back to the 80s with me. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Right, we're going to the 80s. Come on then, let's go. <laughs> You're crazy. So as we start to get into the 80s, very slowly at first, I've been thinking about where I can do this bedroom recreation. And just over there, I've got this big blank wall. And that would actually be perfect for two, let's call them roomlets. Believe it or not, for the past three years, I've actually been working on this video behind the scenes. I've been hunting for my exact 80s desks and monitors that I had for my computers back then, not to mention the original posters I had and some 80s music to set the mood. So for Roomlet 1, let's recreate my family's Apple IIe setup from around 1981, right down to an original click trolley that I've shipped from England to me here in California. And hopefully we can also find that Prince, or is it Phoenix P12, or is it BMC? Well, either way, let's try and find that exact monitor that I've been searching for. And some of you have been following that journey. Hopefully we can recreate it, put it in the room, and finish that story as well. For Roomlet 2, however, let's recreate my Commodore 64 that I had in 1983-ish, complete with its original styled pine desk that I had in my bedroom back then. And I've also found and shipped the exact Hinari TV that I had, the actual unit that I had as a kid. It's hiding right down here. I don't know if it still works, so that's going to be amazing to turn that on. I can't wait. In fact, I'm going to just stop talking about it and let's do it. But I want to mention as well, these aren't gimmicks. You know, I genuinely want to hang out in these rooms. I'm going to be doing Zap64 reviews on the Commodore 64, which is amazing as well, because I used to have Zap64 sitting on that desk we're going to recreate. And we're just going to hang out there, aren't we, and have some fun in the 80s. Now, in order to do that, I've been shopping, and I've actually got the stuff here as we speak. So let's take a look at it. Go on, you go take a look at your shopping. Now we've got lots of fun stuff to play with, but I think first, although I do sometimes keep this in a retro mode, thanks to the Clockology app there, I do think we should make things just a little more like they used to be. With my favorite watch of all time, this is the Casio Biograph. I don't really believe in biorhythms, but it was a really fun thing to 
think about when I was a kid. Buying this from Argos in Richmond was a lot of fun. We can see here that I am on a emotional critical day. That's when your uh, emotional biorhythm is on the change between up and down. It's halfway up, so it's flashing. My physical is kind of high, and my intellectual is kind of low. Nothing new there. And this is really an example of one of those things that I was talking about in the intro. I put this away in, in a drawer for decades, and now I feel like, you know, smartwatch is where it's at. But why do we have to put those things away? I think we almost go into an autopilot where we think, well, that was, that was the past, things have moved on. But I'm starting to disagree with that philosophy. I can wear this watch whenever I want. I still make the batteries for this too. Well, speaking of things that I want, I used to love using my Walkman. I remember I was in the playground at Unicorn School, running around with Katie Beckinsale. <laughs> yeah, we literally did play together in the playground. Uh, playing Kiss Chase was, was a favorite, if I remember rightly. But I remember the first kid who got a Walkman. And of course, I followed suit. And again, probably from Argos, or maybe Dixon's in Richmond, I bought my first Sony Walkman. And I went through a few models over the years, Models of Walkman, that is. <laughs> Don't tell Lady Fractic. Um, I've heard that. Nope. But I always fancied this yellow sports model, similar to the one that Julia Roberts used famously in Pretty Woman in 1990. Holy sh! <laughs> Again, nothing's stopping me using this today. I found this unopened on eBay. There are a few actually unopened on eBay, but this was about a hundred bucks, whereas the others were a thousand. Either way, I'd love to keep this in the box, but I just want to use it. Again, let's pretend it's 1989. Holding history here. I always loved the way that these work, the way they kind of slotted into your earlobes. Not earlobes, but you know what I mean. Good for five bucks off any pre-recorded tape or CD. I'll definitely be redeeming this. Remove the head restraining material. Oh, and the important information begs the question if the warranty is still valid. Use your head when you use your headset. Oh, head restrain restraining material. There's that. Remove for the first time. And there you can see a brand new shiny head. That's how you close it. We've got a belt clip, very important. We've got radio tuning, volume, headphones, a waterproof thing. Norm or limit? Where do the batteries go? Oh, in here? Interesting. <laughs> be saying I haven't got any tapes to play on it. That's not true. I found these in the stuff that I shipped over from the UK. This is now 11. Now that's what I call music 11. I used to get these whenever they came out. So they had all the latest hits on, like my favorite song of all time, I Should Be So Lucky by Kylie Minogue. I did also pick up on eBay some brand new blank tapes so we can make some more mixtapes and other stuff. Uh, I'll be doing that in the future. 
lifetime guarantee. Whose lifetime though? That's the question. Either way, good stuff. And this is again my original cassette deck care kit from WH Smith's, definitely purchased in Richmond. And the fluid, don't know if you can hear it above the tape clicking, but the fluid is still in there. It's probably just alcohol. I never drunk it as a kid, apparently. I used to use that on my Commodore data set. Uh, probably, technically, actually, the only thing that I kept from my Commodore 64. That's wild. Let's batter up. I have a slight doubt that they're going to fit because it's so old, but there it is. Now, <laughs> it's never occurred to me till now. This is exactly where I left it. Unlike a CD or an MP3, the music starts playing exactly where you left off. It almost feels illegal. <laughs> Why doesn't everyone do this? I don't get it. They slot in so perfectly. Oh, guys, this is amazing. All right, here we go. Oh, God. Hang on. Stop. <laughs> I think the tape may be breaking. I've been shopping, as I mentioned. Yes. This was one of my favorite uh, albums in the 80s slash 90s, 1988, yes. Uh, there, of course, is Neil Tennant and Mr. Chris Lowe with identical sets of twin uh, dogs there. When people email me and say, you know, your music really has a Pet Shop Boys vibe. That's exactly why. I grew up listening to Introspective. This, I think, is my favorite album of theirs. Which is why I bought it again. I don't know what would have happened to my original tapes, but here's this one. Don't worry, he was <laughs> fine. But if you'd like to not just be left to your own devices, but create them, we recommend PCB Wii, where you can get great quality PCBs to make your devices from just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Personal Cassettes Broken, doesn't it? That is insane what that can do to you. <laughs> I think it's the combination of that cassette, very specific cassette style sound and obviously the music itself. <sighs> what a ride. <laughs> uh, Stranger Things, I don't actually watch. I couldn't get into it. I think it's because I live in the 80s. <laughs> I'm surrounded by 80s stuff anyway. But they did release some special edition 80s style Cokes. And I thought these would be perfect for just sitting on the desk. <laughs> Unfortunately, they leaked in the post, as you can see here, and this is how I received the package. So I have emptied one of them and took the ring pill off, took the ring pill and took the ring pull off. Well, one of the things that I shipped over from the UK that I'd forgotten about was this photo album. Uh, if you want to know what I possibly looked like in the 80s, <laughs> that's a little example there, definitely an 80s style. Um, but in, in amongst the photos, here's my childhood dog, Piper. She was the sweetest, <laughs> most tolerant dog. And I still have that slingshot, actually. I should put that on the desk. Oh, what's that keyboard? I'm still finding things in photos. That looks like the one that would attach to the Commodore 64. I don't have any photos of my original computers, but I am slowly finding little snippets. Yeah, 
Sorry, I'm just reminiscing now. Here's my point. I found this photo. There's Piper looking out at the nighttime. But this is something I thought I had no photos of. That's the edge of the click trolley that we bought for the Apple IIe and that later I transported upstairs to my bedroom, which is this room, and put my Commodore 64 on it. How do I know that my Commodore 64 is on it? Well, this is the curved cassette holder that I searched for years to find. This is what I found and I've loaded it up with all my Commodore tapes as I would have done back in the day. Now I won't turn it upside down to find the manufacturer because everything will fall out. If you have one of these in gray and possibly single instead of double, please let me know. But we are gonna be using this for inspiration. I can also tell that I had the Max Hedrum poster and I had a Robin of the Hood Commodore 64 game poster. So we're gonna be recreating those for our wall as well. As for that pine desk that you saw Lady Frantic help me build just now, well, Paul Kitching enabled me to recreate 3D versions of basically my memories. I have no photos of that. I just vividly remember. And we had a lot of pine furniture, but we need to make the walls a bit more color accurate. So again, it was time to do some detective work. So the Apple IIe was downstairs. Now I'm calling it a bedroom setup or a roomlet, but basically it was actually downstairs. And although I put the click desk upstairs in my bedroom later, what I'm trying to recreate is how the Apple IIe was downstairs really. Now, again, I don't have any real photos of the Apple itself, but it was in a room that we converted and knocked uh, walls through and put a new front door. We moved the front door of the house and all sorts of strange things. I don't really understand why to this day, <laughs> but uh, I do have photos of that building work and it does reveal a wall color. So what I did is use this app on the iPhone to basically do color match. You can do, get this for Android as well. And then we went to Lowe's, which is like home base if you're from England. Oh, I miss home base as well, which of course is now merged with Argos. <laughs> it's a small world. Anyway, we went and had them make up that color of blue in paint. What about roomlet two? Well, that was my bedroom upstairs. And although I've since discovered from that photo in that photo album that the walls were white, at, at least at that on that day, um, they were also yellow. And I've had that color matched to an old video I found of my bedroom. And as we've got painters in at the moment, they've got all the equipment and everything ready. They very kindly offered to paint up our roomlets for us. At the same time, while we watch them work, let's go back to the 80s again with some more music. You're listening to Retro Recipes Radio here on 95.8 F. Oh, sorry, confused. Let's paint the rooms. pretty good. Uh, they are blank canvases just begging to have posters and desks put up on them and against them. In fact, I'm going to just stop talking about it and let's do it. Coming on guys. Now, what about the monitors? Now you might remember, and you might've seen the videos I made about the monitor that does not exist. It was to do with my memories of my Apple II monitor because basically I couldn't find it anywhere. Now I made a video where I bought a BMC monitor that I thought was so close it could have been the one that I had. But it since came to my attention, thanks to Paul Newcomb, who sent me photos of his Apple IIe monitor that I was mistaken. It was actually this Prince monitor, otherwise known as the Phoenix P12, sold by Simmons McGee in Twickenham and featured here on one of their adverts. Now, during my research, I did find two in the movie Highlander. Here they are. And I think it's possible that one of those is still in this movie props warehouse where they'll rent it out to you, but it says it's non-functioning and they refused to sell it to me. But then Paul Newcomb again to the rescue 
he was keeping an eye on eBay as I was, this print monitor that did come up for sale. Thank you so much, Paul. This is one of my most wanted items that I've ever had. I was able to place a bid and I lost. No, I didn't, I won. <laughs> so that is waiting for us to unbox right here, right now. Let's go do it. I'm living my dream here. Thanks to you guys for joining me. It makes it all the more special. That painting was on the wall of our family home forever. And it's something my parents bought, I think before I was born, just because they loved it. And it always kind of fascinated me, you know, as this beautiful cottage on a country winding road. I began wondering where that was painted. So I did a lot of research on Google Street View and eventually I found it. It has changed to be almost unrecognizable apart from the same tree. But what remains are these bollards that kept them in front of the new houses. One day I'll visit for real, but for now that's another mystery solved. And it means uh, I can put that painting on the wall with some knowledge behind it. Uh, and it is time now to put some posters on the walls and I'm gonna basically recreate most of them. However, there's one that I was able to find on Flea Bay. This is the style Commodore 64 that I had. Red pin Commodore 64, and then I bought this Australian-designed slimline case. 
because I'd seen the Commodore 128 being advertised and I got a bit jealous and felt a bit old fashioned. So I thought this would make my C64 basically a 128, right? So I bought one and I converted my C64. Now this is another one that I found again on Fleabay. Uh, you can see where it was manufactured. If you did acquire a C64 exactly like this, although it might have had orange buttons, I'm not sure though, uh, around the West London area, around 1985, six, seven, it might be mine. So please drop me a message below the video or, or send me an email. That formative age of like 11, 12 years old and that machine are so special to me. Anyway, if you think you might have it, <laughs> please reach out. The company that designed this, there is a rumor that they designed this before Commodore ever designed the C64C. And the Australian company tried to sue Commodore for stealing their design. If so, shame on you, Commodore, and I hope you go bankrupt. Oh, you already have, sorry. Ah, sensitive subject. Anyway, let's go put this and everything else in place.
while my bedrooms are back in business and I'm feeling 17 again, I wonder if I can get this girl I've had my eye on to come up to my room. Speaking of that Hinari TV, I bought that from Boots, the chemist, the pharmacy essentially, in Richmond again. And I think this one is my third unit because the first two, the tube was misaligned inside, which doesn't matter for normal TV and probably is why Hinari or whoever made Hinari stuff didn't care in the factory when they were watching TV and the, they thought, oh, that looks right. But when you use the Commodore 64, the text is very obviously misaligned. And I did end up opening it up, obviously discharged the tube properly, not like Bjork, uh, and loosened the screws and adjusted it myself to make it perfect, because I, to this day, I'm a perfectionist. So that's the story behind the Hinari. But unfortunately, for now at least, I can't seem to get a picture from the three Commodore 64s that I tried, including NTSC and PAL ones. And according to my friends on the Facebook Commodore 64 group, thanks guys, that's likely because although the step-up power converter converts voltage, it can't actually change the frequency from the 60 hertz to the 50 hertz that the TV was expecting from the UK power system. And this means that the tuning frequencies are also likely affected. I do have a cunning plan, however, for this, using a UK backup power supply with its own battery, which should operate itself independently of the US mains frequencies. And I'll let you know how that works out. For now though, I am very happy indeed with this moody 2am TV static and with the whole setup. Well, what a day. This has been, as you know, three or four years in the making. It would have been ridiculous if everything works perfectly, of course. I really can't yet actually believe it. You might have noticed I got a bit teary when I first set this up on here because this, this look has only been held in my memories. So this is the most powerful setup for me. I'm now living in my memories and they're, they're actually here. So that's quite a thing. We're gonna have to do a bit of repair work on the monitor there and see what's going on with that. But otherwise, it looks really good. And I hope you'll agree, we did a good job of recreating that little sliver of the corner of that photo. This is still hugely nostalgic, but also just looks really cool, doesn't it? Uh, something to do with the lighting and that desk lamp. I had a, a couple of moments where I felt a bit bittersweet because I realized that having everything back didn't actually bring me back in time. I mean, only a time machine can do that what I think all of us would give to have that access to a time machine. I'm still working on building mine. I'm gonna combine it with the gymnasium, but this is definitely the next best thing. So I guess it's time to sign off. You're gonna be seeing both these setups in a lot of future videos. Let me know if I've inspired you to do something similar in a little corner of your room, or maybe you've already done that and you wanna send me a photo and I'll put it in the gallery on the retro show, our monthly retro show. Well, until next time, thanks for time traveling back in time with me. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. Do you know your next line? Good. Come on, let's go.